Hi everyone, welcome. The bin that you see here is the system that I've put together some information about on this green board. It's the newest of my systems, launched only 10 days ago. It's a bin of red wiggler worms, and their job here in this bin is to compost my kitchen scraps and household waste, paper, even leaves I bring from outside, stuff like that. And so far, I've given them no food. The only thing that they've been given is a nice aged package of bedding, basically just shredded paper, cardboard, and leaves. It's um, it's bedding that was actually aging for six weeks before the worms were introduced. So long before I put worms in here, the material in this bin was aging, getting nice and cozy and soaking wet and, you know, hopefully uh, comfortable for the worms to be introduced into. However, no food yet. This will be their very first feeding. Sometimes I build new bins with food in them, other times not. This was one of these bedding only builds. And when we launched this bin, I took extra care to make sure that you, the viewers, can easily see the worms that we were putting in here. In fact, we even weighed them. And with everyone's input, that's the input of six people plus my guests added in, I've got an average number, an estimated population, in this bin of 1,676 worms. So I'm gonna give them their first feeding today. So let's remove their covering, see how things look. I'm already seeing one or two worms hanging out on the paper coverings, as well as one worm kind of sticking to the plastic. But that's the only one, so we'll set the plastic aside. And I guess before we can set this top covering paper aside. We're going to have to evict these little wormies that are hanging out on the top surface. Uh, that was three. This is four. And here's number five. All right. I think we've got them all. Let's take a look at how things look here. So a population of, you know, 1,700 worms is a pretty respectable amount. So Hopefully we'll see a few worms when we uh, explore a little bit to see how they're doing in here. Now, it does appear that we bought over a little bit of leftover food from their previous bin. I see some corn cob bits here. And this is the cork. Man, that thing looks really haggard. <laughs> Cork's been with us for a number of years, going from system to system to system taking quite some time to break down. So now, besides some kitchen scraps, I've also got a variety of other things I want to include. So some of those things are a few days worth of coffee filters that have been piling up here. I'm gonna set one of them aside as our feeding zone indicator that we're gonna drape over the feeding area. And then the rest of these can be torn up a little bit and just included as bedding with the feeding. <laughs> here we have a, a damp piece of paper paper towel or napkin, whatever it was. And here too, we've got a number of leftovers that I picked out of a couple other bins that I'm looking to bring an end to soon. So there's pieces of banana stem, pieces of tomato peel, the end of some sort of a veggie, little pieces of bedding here and there, pieces of paper. I see cantaloupe rind, and who knows, perhaps a few other things as well. So mostly stuff that might count mainly as bedding, perhaps a few bits of leftover food that they can eat and then the foods I've got for them are over on the side I've also got a uh, a prepared mix of bedding similar to what this bin was built out of over here too so we can perhaps even build up the system a little bit so for now you know what I'm going to set this piece of paper aside this coffee filter which will become our feeding zone indicator and I think we'll just take a quick glance through here to see how the worms are doing after being in their new home for 10 days with no food. It didn't seem like they had a great deal of interest in those corn cob bits that were left for them out on the surface. It seems like they really got drawn to the um, the abundant moisture that was placed into this bin and seems to have seeped to the bottom. <laughs> so you can see a good number of worms hanging down here in the bottom of the, um, the bin. Here too. A lot of times when you... Um, explore a brand new bin made up of a bunch of shredded paper. It's actually kind of difficult to see the worms, but luckily we are kind of getting lucky by 
sort of knowing where to look for them since all that moisture on the bottom is going to be where we're going to find a lot of the worms hanging out. So I think if we just keep excavating down around the edge we're going to keep bumping into little stashes of worms hanging out. And other than um, other than being maybe a little bit more damp than you normally see in my worm bins, things do look pretty good in here. I guess one of the rules of thumb for determining how damp the bedding in your system should be is that you should be able to grab a handful of it and give it a good squeeze and no more than a few drops of water should come out of it. I believe just from looking at this stuff it's pretty clear that more than a couple drops of moisture would come seeping out of this stuff if I were to give it a good squeeze. But I don't think the worms are complaining. I think that's probably a best practice intended for people who might be um, interested in possibly screening the bedding at some point soon where you would definitely want it to be a little bit um, less damp. But I think in the early days of a system, or perhaps if it was a system where you were running um, cocoons, like a cocoon nursery, certain conditions, certain systems do benefit from conditions like this that are really, really damp. And the worms clearly enjoy being in this stuff. They're all down right at the bottom, really ba basking in all this moisture. It is kind of fun to be able to like pick right down to the bottom and come up on each occasion with a nice big handful of worms. I believe that in time, this moisture will gradually escape the bin through evaporation, or perhaps by us adding slightly drier bedding materials to the system. But for now, it does seem kind of damp, so I think uh, I think the worms are going to enjoy that for for a little while longer, at least. All right, I'm going to create a pretty good size opening down in the middle of the container here, into which we can set up today's feeding area. But I'd also like to go really generous on bedding in here. It's the reason I really created a pretty good size opening. For us to put today's food in as well as bedding and stuff like that. So I think we're going to begin with a, a handful of my prepared bedding. So this is what it looks like. Very similar. And I mean compared to the stuff in this bin, this is nothing. I mean I was considering my prepared bedding, this batch at least, to be quite damp. But if you compare it to what's going on in this bin, it's not damp at all. <laughs> but you can see it's glistening too. It's got a good bit of moisture. So now, I think the next thing we could come in with is the contents of this little container here. All the stuff that I fished out of a another couple bins that I've um, I've got in my sights for harvesting soon. So now some of these coffee filters that we're placing in here still had a good bit of coffee in them. So we're already starting to introduce a little bit of the food that they're going to be getting. A lot of times I do come down here with coffee for my worms, but today I just don't happen to have any. I tapped out my supply when I fed worms yesterday. I suppose I could have gone into the coffee machine and grabbed what's in there now, but I figured I've got all kinds of stuff that I want to get rid of that's, um, that's not coffee. And those things include, well, let's start bringing in in here. One of them is going to be a an entire avocado. <laughs> so I think um, the thing was in my freezer, and I, I kind of like the idea of giving the worms at least some way of possibly accessing what's inside of it. So I'm trying to do this in such a way that the knife doesn't slip off of the avocado and end up in my hand because that would not be fun. So I think as long as we create little access points, possibly the worms will be able to start making their way in. If nothing else, then at least some of the, the bacteria and microbes that inhabit the bin can begin infiltrating this and softening it up so that the worms can eventually have at it as well. And then perhaps next time it won't be so tough and we'll be able to 
separate it, spread it out a little bit, maybe. Now, the other thing that I might need to use my little pocket knife for here is this pile of stuff that I got from my mom. Went to get dinner at her house yesterday and on the way out the door, she provided a little treat for the wormies here. Some of it is strawberry, it seems, and what's this? I'm trying to tell if it's maybe apple peel. This, oh, oh boy, that was not, that was not good. Good thing my hand wasn't on the other side of that when it finally gave. So, there we go. Maybe it's pear, maybe it's apple, kind of hard to tell. But we've given them a nice little arrangement down here and we're not done. I've also got a yummy banana peel bonus. So all kinds of their favorites going in here as their very first feeding, spring, spreading it out on a um, nice assortment of different types of bedding materials, shredded paper cardboard leaves, coffee filters, even that arrangement of various different stuff that went in here earlier. The other thing I was thinking of throwing in here is over in the box over here. Let me go grab it. It's my box of leaves from outside. And you could probably tell I just topped it off. I've not even used it yet. But before we do that, I'm going to put in a little bit of this pulverized eggshell. Give the worms a little bit of grit to help them break the foods down that they're going to be eating. And... On top of that, perhaps a handful or two of leaves, spread it out a little bit. This stuff's going in dry, so maybe that'll actually start soaking up some of the moisture in the system. And then, last but not least, my worm chow. The worm chow is also dry, just a powdery kind of mix of different types of stuff that I grind up into this fairly fine combination for the wormies. So, I think we've given them quite a nice feeding, if you ask me. So, we're pretty much done here. All that's left to do is get things covered up a little bit, and we can let them get back to work. Well, let them get to work. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to say they haven't been working, because, I mean, over the past 10 days, I'm sure they've been eating um, the leftovers that came in with them, probably nibbling at the bedding already a little bit, so... I'm sure that they've been starting into the processing of the materials in their system and and the creation of castings. But now they've got a real yummy, you know, proper feeding that they can sink their teeth into. Oh, do they have teeth? I don't think they do. <laughs> but they can really rip into that first nice generous meal of various fruits. I don't know, is the avocado a fruit? I think it is. Well, whatever it is. For the most part, it's fruit, if not all fruit. That is if you don't count the uh, the worm chow, because the worm chow is all kinds of stuff like seeds and grains and things like that. So, we've got a good bit of stuff stuck to my glove here, and it would be a shame to take it with me, so let's see what I could do about leaving it here in the bin for the worms. Wiping it off my glove, limiting what gets rinsed and drained down in this at the sink, and leaving it down here in the worm bin to eventually become worm food. All right. Oh, looks like I spilled a whole bunch of coffee out here on the table. I've got a little bit of cleaning up to do once we finish here. But as always, I don't keep you guys around for the cleanup portion of the uh, worm bin check-ins. I take care of that off camera because that's boring. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always very much appreciated. If you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.